What's up everybody? Blue Gabe. We're in Pensacola, Florida at one of the oldest seafood places in Florida. This place has been opened for almost 90 consecutive years. Right here we got Mr. Ross, my cousin. Hi. Haven't seen him in like 20 years, his wife Frances. Check out behind the camera though. <laughs> Who else was I talking to? <laughs> I haven't heard that phrase yet before. Yes, this is a snapper video and we are going to spear a big Cabrera snapper here in a minute. But first, let's go up in here. We're on our way to dinner. We stopped by. We're actually on our way to Louisiana to get my new boat and to do some frogging and catfish jugging and all kinds of fun stuff. Then to Venice, Louisiana to go offshore tuna fishing with my buddy trolling naked. But first, we wanted to stop and come into this awesome seafood place. You know what's cool about a seafood house like this? It's so much cheaper than fishing. You don't have to buy fuel, pay for boat insurance, nothing. You just come right here, get what you want, you know buy catch, perfect. Guys. Tell everybody what you want to do with a halibut. Let's go to Norway and spearfish halibut. How are you doing? Please. If we have a good month in California. All right. <laughs> Look at that, those salmon, cods. This is what we're going after, though, here in Louisiana. Tuna? You gonna reel it in? Yeah. There's guns. Shrimp. Look at the size of them jokers. <laughs> Man. Big old shrimp. That's the biggest I've ever I bet you if we cast net bait in Louisiana, we'll catch shrimp that big. You guys ever seen anyone free dive and catch these by hand? Yeah, that's what I thought. Dude. I've seen you get bit by one. That is true. <laughs> you know what's funny is I bet you the water in that tank is just as cool as the water I was in. When Ivan was here, look, I filled up this picture. The water level is here. How deep was it in your house? Eight feet. All right, so I'm gonna take you all right now back to Stewart, Florida, where we actually end up spearing this fish. And then when we get done cooking it, don't go anywhere, because once we're done, I'm gonna be somewhere else cool and I'll end this video. You guys see that? I just wish you could smell it though. Like I always say, but can you smell it? I really wish you could smell that. I'm about to make my version of mashed potatoes. I just strained them. Boom, right over here real fast. A little bit of something, something. So in here, I have just a little bit of olive oil. I've got some sauteed onions, mushrooms, and garlic. We're gonna go ahead and add them over here though. Bam, just like that. And I need to give a huge shout out to somebody right now. Somebody who keeps my life in order. Somebody who keeps my life in check, keeps all my stuff going. No, we're not talking about Kelly Young. Pan over there to old Rico Suave. Rico! What's going on? Anytime I call Rico day or night, when I have a problem with anything, the computer, the drone, life. Technology. Technology, he always shows up and he always fixes. I don't know how he got so smart, but he's definitely smart when it comes to technology. You remember my sheep's head video, the last one you just watched? There at the end when I swam down there in that Big Cabrera darted at me and scared all the sheep's head off and then I went after him and the shark showed up on me. Guess what? Kelly Young, Jake, and Madison and I went back. Y'all watch this. We get in, snook everywhere, sheep's head everywhere, but I got one thing in mind. Roll the clip.
this current rough. Yeah. That ain't him though. No way. <laughs> There's another one that was bigger. I just was in the middle of the big school snook. He come easing in there. That was the last time he'll eat ever ease into anywhere. Oh my gosh, I can't believe you found that thing in the This is not the one I saw yesterday. Not even close. What? Look at the yeah. teeth. Yeah, yeah, you already been in the, water, in the water for about 10 minutes and you already got something. Time for Kelly to get in the water and see if she can't dust one. Did you see another one down there? I wasn't looking. I had my eyes set on the target. But this wasn't the target. He just happened to swim into the target range. Dang. I didn't spook anything. I did everything real calm and smoothly to where I didn't scare the whole entire school. Nice mangrove, or <laughs> nice cabare though. Whoa, that's pretty neat. We're gonna do all kinds of meals with him and I'm also gonna do a video on how to skull mount him. For those of y'all that have been following along for a while, you see that giant grouper head on my kitchen table. We're going to do that same thing with him. All right, so we're going to throw this fish back on ice. Open his gut cavity, fill it full of ice. Kelly got a nice sheep's head. We got some shrimp and some sand fleas, and we're going to start toady fishing. That'll be a whole different video. As of this video, I'll see y'all back at my house. I showed that Cabrera who is boss. Now, I showed you a little bit of footage of us diving before I shot him. But what really happened was we eased up there. Now Kelly and I are a little competitive when it comes to spearfishing. I'm like, babe, the current's way too bad. I'm just gonna ease back there real quick with the GoPro and just see if I see him. I'll bring my gun just in case maybe a shark tries to eat me and then bam, as soon as I swam up, he come easing up out of the shadows and I jerk just bwop right in the head and stoned him. But what you don't know, is that shark came back, but I don't have it on film. I wasn't expecting it. It came back. So yeah, we went spearfishing. I know this is like the fourth one of this series of spearfishing, and we're over. Tomorrow we're headed to Louisiana. But right now, I want to cook this Cabrera snapper. But I want to show you all how I make the world's best homemade mashed potatoes. Lots of butter. About a cup of milk. About a half a thing of mushrooms about a half a thing of onions. I saute that down with some butter and some garlic. So the reason I don't cook the mushrooms as I'm boiling the potatoes is you just don't get that much flavor. I want all the flavor I can get. That's why I saute them. And I leave the peelings on because I like dirty taters. It looks soupy now, but as it warms up and cooks in, that soupiness will go away. I do, though, need to go out to the truck and get that big old Cabrera out of the cooler and clean him. But I wanted to get these mashed potatoes done. Come over here and look at that. Dirty mashed potatoes with onions, mushrooms, and garlic. Lots of butter, a little bit of milk, a little bit of salt and pepper. Man, it doesn't get any better than that. These right here will make some of y'all want to smack y'all mama. I ain't smacking mine because she'll probably beat the heck out of me, but some of y'all could get away with that. No, I can't. I ain't doing that. But I bet you didn't think it was going to look like that the next time you saw it. Let me give you an idea of what's going on. We took the guts out, the gills out, because we're going to utilize every square inch of this fish. Kelly actually on her channel it's going to take the heads, the ribs, and the throat, and the backbone, and make a fish head soup. 
She really loves the collagen. She said it's good for your hair. Might even help mine. You never know. And I'm going to cook the fillets and I'm going to give half of this fish to my next door neighbor who always helps me just keep an eye out on my house. And we're going to cook the other half. Kelly's going to take all the head, the throats, and all that and put it in this big pot and make fish head soup. I'll show you just a teeny bit of it on this video, but you'll have to go to hers when it's up. So like I said before, I'm going to save the throats for her. Just like so. I'm not even going to remove them from the bottom. She can clean her own fish. We did scale it because I didn't want to do that inside. Looks like I cut a sheep's hair off out there in the yard. There were so many big giant scales. This fish has got a ton of fat in its meat. That's why it's good for soup. I probably should have left a little bit more meat on the bones for her. But you know, this is my video. I'm living in it. Look at that big old Such a nice chunk. So I'm going to actually get a little bit fancier in this video. And I'm going to cook a really, really good fish dish. Make a good sauce, some nice pan seared snapper. I just got olive oil. I'm going to put some butter in there and let all that get going. And I'm going to take this chunk. I left the skin on it so you could really grill it. You could put some smoke on it and then sear it, which would be really, really good. Or you can just skin it like I'm about to do and pan sear it. My fish and my crabs and my tank love the bloodlines and this little bit of fat. Let's see if the remora is hungry. And God said, let there be light. He's a pig. Yeah, he's a growing remora. So we're going to take this big old thick shoulder piece. And believe it or not, I've actually had fans tell me that fish don't have shoulders. So you learn something new every day. No. <laughs> Hopefully y'all got that that was sarcasm. We just call it shoulders, just because I guess we're country and it's just what we do. That's about a one pound piece of Cabarrus snapper. Trim this little bit of fat off right here. Like so. I'm gonna actually try to start it off a little bit slower and cook it into that sear because that's such a thick piece of meat. Sea salt, a little bit of garlic, garlic salt. About that much. I'm just gonna let this cook for a little while. We'll be right back. I know you're wondering, wait, why did you take it out of one pan and put it in the other pan? I'm gonna make the sauce with this pan and I wanted some of the fish flavor to make the sauce with. So I put it in this pan now and I'm going to put it back in the oven on convection bake at 375 degrees for about 10 minutes while I make the sauce. So I've got it. It's a little bit brown, not burnt. It's cooked where all them flavors are in there and they're nice ugly. We got some white cooking wine. Let it get hot again. That's what you're looking for. That'll break all that stickiness up. Start to make a sauce. Then we're going to add... Kelly hates when I do this. I actually just smeared that on the pan. Look at it. But you know what? It's just me. It's just me. We're going to add some unsalted butter. Lemon. A little dash of Crystal's hot sauce. A little bit of Worcestershire. Not that much. Think about that fish. Really nice and baked. A little bit of crunch on the outside. Good homemade mashed potatoes with mushrooms and onion. 
and this sauce poured on top. Butter starting to melt. Nice golden brown. Man, it smells good. I know that. Now I'm going to turn that heat completely off. It's key that you keep stirring it though, because you don't want it to settle and stick. Alright, I baked it for about, I don't know, eight minutes. Then I broiled it for two minutes. That's a pretty thick chunk of snapper. Please don't fall apart. Look at that though. On a little bed of the best homemade mashed potatoes you'll ever eat. Look at that though. You know that's going to taste amazing. I'm going to cook up some asparagus and then we'll be ready to eat. Alright, in my opinion there is only one way to cook asparagus. Let this butter melt down and get really really piping hot. One thing I cannot stand in life is soggy asparagus. That's like, that should be in the Ten Commandments of not to do when cooking. Lots of garlic. Pretty good amount of lemon. And I want it all melted and crackling before I add my asparagus. About like so. Cook it hot and fast. Two minutes, no more than that. You do not need to overcook it. Here's the simple, best way to prepare it. Sea salt. Go pretty heavy. Get brave and go just a little heavy with the sea salt. A little bit of lemon. And that Parmesan cheese. Listen. If your asparagus don't crunch, you've overcooked it. Mm, mm, mm. I don't know which one's gonna be best. Look at the teeth on that thing, though. That cabrera almost had teeth that big. Look at this, though. Almost like occasion. A to Faye. Are you hungry though? I'm starving. <laughs> I've been looking forward to this meal all day. I would say this is the perfect size Cubera to shoot and eat too. Because it wasn't too big and it wasn't too small. It's so good. The potatoes, delicious. With the sauce, the lemon, wonderful. This is probably one of my, this is my favorite meal you've ever made. All right, so blue gobby is up to bat. Now, it almost looks soupy. That's because I don't like my mashed potatoes real thick. I like them soupy, but most of that soupiness is from the sauce, which is obviously a good thing. Everybody loves sauce. I can already tell you I like it because I cooked it and I tried it while I was cooking so I already know it's going to be insanely good. And the asparagus matches perfectly with it. Anytime you cook asparagus, it's a little crooked. Stand up. You get the point. It should be crunchy. Man, so good like that. Two minutes, hot butter, a little teeny bit of olive oil if you want, sea salt, and lemon or lime. Man, it's good like that. Now, when we get done with this, we gotta start packing, because tomorrow, tomorrow night we leave for Louisiana. We're going near Lafayette to the Pro Drive factory, the Pro, the Pro Drive boats. He just built me a brand new 1856, decked out with outrigger lights. I'm so excited. We're going frogging, catfish jugging, all kinds of fun stuff. I cannot wait till we get there. Yeah, that was one of the most amazing 
fish dishes I've ever cooked. Super easy, super plain, super simple, super fresh, and tasted so amazing. But back to the beginning of the video when we showed you that hurricane flood line, we're here at my cousin Ross's house. Just imagine that much water. That's how much water came through his house. I can't show you because it's dark, but the gulf is right there and the bay's right there. The water came in this way, headed that away, and took his whole bottom stairs of his house right out. You guys, we're leaving here tomorrow morning at 7 o'clock, headed to Pro Drive. We're going to get the boat, film some cool videos in the swamp, then we're headed to Venice, Louisiana, where the big giant tuna live, getting on my buddy Trolla Naked's boat, who you saw me do the video with earlier, with the big giant tuna. We're going to go after tuna, and Kelly's going to try to spear some triple tail. We go home for two days, then we fly to Spokane, Washington to do a float trip down the Snake River and try to catch salmon and shoot chuckers with our shotguns. It's going to be an amazing end of October, to say the least. Thanks for watching, thanks for subscribing, thanks for supporting me, my brother Dear Me, and my girlfriend Kelly Young. But like Jake always says, it's time to get up out of here and get the heck out of shape. See y'all!